So the shift is powerful. The shift is purposeful. The shift is incredible. And we have to surrender and allow. But hey, we're not so good at surrendering, are we? Because we like to be in control. We like to be in control. The control that we feel helps us to believe that we are safe. Safe in the familiar patterns. Safe in the habits that we have. Safe in our comfort zone. And so when we become uprooted, all of those things that we relied on to keep us safe are no longer stable, assured. We are wobbling with uncertainty, with doubt, with not knowing what might happen next, with not knowing who we really are. And so a greater sense of security and safety in this world is coming through this awakening process. But it all gets shaken up along the way. It's like our roots that were in things that were trying to give us a sense of security weren't rooted in a way that's sustainable. Maybe our security comes from other people. Maybe we need the, their reassurance. Maybe we need their approval. Maybe we need to rely on them to feel good about ourselves. Maybe we need to rely on them in order to exist, to have permission, to rely on other resources outside of ourselves to make us feel as if life's worth living or that our needs will be met. And so when our needs are met in a new way, in a clear way, in a way which is sustainable and comes from deep, deep within, then it doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter how chaotic things are. It doesn't matter how people behave and what they do because we're not relying on them and the systems of old anymore. We're relying on ourselves. And that creates a supercharged state of power and resilience. And we're coming into that. We're coming into a much more grounded way of being that's self-assured, where we know who we are, what we will and won't tolerate or accept, and we know how to find peace within us regardless of what's going on in our external circumstances. If you're not there yet, then you're in the process of working all that out and getting there. Okay, and your guidance teams are there to help you with this. Okay. Regardless of how you feel connected to your own inner guidance, your own intuition. Some people feel very connected. Some people don't always feel connected. It can, you know, change depending on what's going on. And for some people, they don't even feel connected at all, yet they still are. They just haven't quite recognized it as that. And so our internal navigation system is going to become really fine-tuned throughout this awakening process. And that's occurring now in lots of different incremental ways. Little fine-tuning is going on. Because we're going to become so reliant on our own internal navigation. And you know, the interesting thing is that the more people do rely on that, the more they realize that there's actually a collective navigation system that's wired through us all uh, in, in an intuitive way, but a collective way. And it's in tune with the planet and it's in tune with the cosmos. It's like all these beautiful uh, light 
beams that are connecting us from that centered place of intuitive awareness and when we're in the clear vibration of that we pattern match with other people that are also at that level and then rather than feeling like we're on an isolated journey on our own we realize that we're actually part of this change creating this change from a much higher level of awareness with a much greater guiding wisdom and intelligence working with us. Which kind of takes away the responsibility of the small mind needing to work everything out and get it all right. And the fear and the stress that goes with that. Because on an emotional level, you know, a lot of people uh, run programs from that inner child of can't get it right, worried about getting wrong, getting it wrong, feel like a failure, feel not good enough, not worthy. All of these kind of emotional layers get in the way of a clear connection to, to the greater guiding wisdom and intelligence, which fine tunes our intuition and guides us through this every step of the way. And so the small mind with its programs, uh, you know, the, the programs of our historic past, which is like the database of the mind, it's recoded through all the cells of the body, uh, that can keep us in a victim state, a small state, a vulnerable state, an overwhelmed state, a state of not feeling like we have enough power to move forward in life in a way that is congruent, that we, where we have confidence, where we feel self-assured. And so it's very easy then to feel very wobbled very easily um, by things people say, things that people do, things that are going on in, in, in the external environment. Whereas when you're in alignment, when, when that navigation system, when that intuition that inner wisdom is strong and you learn to trust it, strong and trust, and you surrender into it, then you haven't got to work it all out anymore. Oh, should I do this? Or should I do that? Is this right? Is that wrong? What will they think if I do? What will they think if I don't? That becomes irrelevant. And that's a beautiful thing. Because all of that small mind stuff is only based around the programs of the past. And we're letting go of all of that. We're reprogramming. It's recoding on a, on a physiological level as well. We can get into talking about all of that bit by bit. Um, and if you want me to, to talk more specifically about any of this, then, then let me know. Let me know right in the comments. Um, but to become more aware of how important your own internal navigation system is, to give it space and time to attune to the higher frequencies, to connect in through the networks of light that are supporting this ascension process, this awakening, how humanity's awakening. The word awakening's got some strange connotations currently, so I'm aware of that, that not everyone that is going through the awakening process um, has a clear idea of what awakening is. Maybe we'll talk about that at some point as well. Um, you know, a very tiny, tiny speck on this full spectrum of what the awakening is, is traveling down rabbit holes, trying to find out who's done this and who's done that and who's done the other, okay? It's like it's not even relevant to the actual awakening um, of humanity's uh, consciousness, I guess it is in as much as it does a great job at triggering everything and everyone. And we need the triggers to access the database, okay? Um, but don't get lost in all of that. If, if you're listening to this, um, I doubt that you are getting lost. You may have had a little journey with that and you've come back into your power. If you are uh, someone that finds themselves slipping into that very easily, um, then you'll, you'll find eventually that there are specific triggers there for you. We can look at that to enable you to bring all your energy back that you're otherwise losing um, to all that worry and all of that concern. You can bring your energy back, bring it back to you and come into a centered place of trusting your own intuitive guidance 
to support you to know what decisions to make, to support you to make decisions, to make your choices from that congruent place of absolute truth within you. Not being um, bombarded and battered by everybody's, everybody else's viewpoint. Okay, because most of that is only coming currently from the limitations of the programs that people are running in their minds. Okay, and so yes, it's a small part of it because we need to release those programs, but that's not the full awakening journey by far. And so keep tuning in. We're here to support you and uh, take a little bit of time to acknowledge your own intuitive wisdom, even in small ways, when you're learning to trust more and listen to yourself more, acknowledge that. And also maybe acknowledge when you don't. It's just as important. Be honest with yourself. Ah, yeah, I wasn't listening to myself then. I felt that in my heart that that's what I should do. And then I did something else instead because. You don't have to analyze it too much, but just gently witness with that self-honesty. Just notice when you do follow your own guidance, when you do follow your own inner wisdom, and when you don't. Just simple observation and more honesty with self. Self-honesty is everything right now. And self-honesty doesn't mean that you can then use that honesty to beat yourself up. That's not what it's about at all. So you don't want to have a, a, a beating stick that every time you see yourself getting it wrong, you're like, you're so wrong. You did that again. Why do you always do that? You shouldn't do that. No, 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 no. That would be a program, okay, that you're running somewhere in the family history or society or culture that you're in has told you that that's how you treat someone that gets things wrong, okay? And you, that's not gonna help. So you may have always done that. Yeah, so that's a, that's a pattern to watch, to observe and to gently, gently do things differently. Put down the stick, stop beating yourself up and just softly, softly, gently with love and compassion for the beautiful you Ah, see, that's what you do. Yeah, you worry you're going to get it wrong. You're worried about following your intuition, even though it's strong sometimes. And rather than risk getting it wrong, you follow someone else instead. Ah, I can see how you do that and why you do that. You don't feel safe to follow your intuition, perhaps. Okay, let's try a different way. And then gently, gently nurture yourself into a new way of being. As if you have a child in your care, a child of light that you love, that you're caring for and supporting. You wouldn't use a stick with that child, would you? You wouldn't berate that child, would you? You wouldn't make that child feel guilty or shame that child, would you? You'd very gently and supportively and lovingly show that child a different way, right? That's the way. You're worth that. You're worth that. Stay blessed. Stay blessed.